fabulous ones, it's Prof G, and are you ready to become captains of cloud storage and ladies and lords of image loading? Well, let's set sail for big learning, because in this lesson, we're going to add a horizontal scroll view, which will load up all of the images we've saved in cloud storage for Firebase using the image URLs we've saved to Cloud Firestore. Let us continue to hack. Now, while we could add code directly to the spot detail view, that view is getting pretty complex. My Xcode's starting to choke on the view's complexity. This might be a bug in Xcode when dealing with logic to display varying toolbar items, but I'm starting to find that Xcode does stop if the code has errors, but it doesn't accurately point out the line containing the error, and it doesn't properly describe the error, and that's just limited to this view. And also, this view just has a lot of code in it. Eventually, we will want to refactor this, but it's definitely getting harder to focus on the individual interface items we're trying to create. So instead, let's create a new file for this view, and after we get horizontal image scrolling working, we'll add it to the spot detail view. So let's add our new view below spot detail view by right-clicking spot detail view, selecting new file, Swift UI view, and we'll call this spot detail photo scroll view. Now we need some data to show in our scroll view. And unfortunately we can't easily read the data from Cloud Firestore database and the cloud storage since we need a spot and then we need to read the photos for that spot. But for now what I'll do is I'll hard code a string which will give us access to an image in cloud storage. And we'll do this by creating some fake placeholder data just to make sure that things are working properly. Then we'll switch to loading data from Firebase. So inside this view struct, I'm going to create a new local struct called fake photo with struct fake photo colon identifiable open and close curlies. We'll make this identifiable by saying let ID equals UUID open and close parens dot UUID string. And then we'll add var image URL string equals and I'll enter double quotes for the empty string, but I want to put in an actual URL string in here so that we can load the image from cloud storage. So with your browser open to your project's console, let's find an image we want to load. Now remember, we save the image URLs not to cloud storage, but to cloud Firestore database. So I'll choose this here, this one that says yummy cheese. And if I click on this image URL string here inside of a photo document, I can click the pencil. I can click in the field that holds this URL string, type command A to select the entire string, type command C to copy it. And with this URL string on my clipboard, I'll return to Xcode and paste this in between the double quotes. And by the way, if you want to try out this URL to make sure that it works, you can paste it directly into your browser. In Safari, this will prompt you to download and then display the image. In Chrome, it will display the image inline in the browser, but that'll confirm your URL works and show you what to expect. Then below the fake photos struct and above the body property, I'm going to create an array of fake photos to display with let photos equals square brackets fake photo open and close parens. Then I'll copy the fake photo initializer and paste in a bunch of these with commas separating each fake photo element. I've got eight in this photo array. That'll be plenty to test things out. And now we can code our interface. So I'm going to highlight and delete the text view and enter a scroll view. And I'll select the option with axes, show indicator, and content, holding down the option key so that I get all the parameters. And for the axes, I'm going to set dot horizontal. I want a horizontally scrolling scroll view. For show indicators, I'll say true. This will show scroll bars at the bottom. In iOS, the indicators only show when scrolling. Feel free to change that to false if you don't like that look. And tab and press return for content curlies. Now inside the scroll view, we also need an HDAC and a for each. So HDAC open and close curlies for each. And Xcode kindly provides me with this option to put in the photos and photo. So I'll select that. Xcode writes the code for me. Thanks, Xcode. And we're going to load each image in using async image. But to do that, we need to access the image URL string in the photo value. And we need to convert that to a URL since it's a string. So in the first line of the for each, we'll say let image URL equals URL, selecting the option with string, and we'll pass in photo.imageURL string. But since creating a URL could potentially result in a nil, we'll use nil coalescing with double question marks, followed by URL initializing this with a string passing in the empty string. This is just to silence the error. Hopefully we'll never see that empty string in here. And with a valid URL, we're ready for async image. So we'll select the option with URL content and placeholder. The URL is image URL, tab and press return on content. And here we'll call the image lowercase i image, tab to the code, and we'll modify that lowercase i image. So this is now an image view. So under here, we can enter any modifiers for that view dot resizable. I'll put a comment in here that says the order is important. Now this comment applies to the two lines I'm about to type. Although I'm embarrassed to say that I flipped the proper order in here, you'll notice that my images actually look a bit squished. I'll fix that in a subsequent video. Sorry about that. So much for the PhD, huh? And under this, I'll type in dot frame with width and height, both 
of 80, and I'll scale to fill. So if you want to avoid the squished looking images, you can flip these two lines with scale to fill first and the frame afterward. You definitely want to scale before you compress things to avoid any distortion. Now, since we're using scale to fill here, this is going to fill up our frame, but it might mean that anything that's not square is actually outside of that frame. And we don't want that to spill over into our user interface. So we can prevent that by adding dot clipped in here. That'll ensure that we show an 80 by 80 square with the image filling the entire square. And we'll clip out anything that spills outside of that space. If we had scale to fit in here, we'd show the entire image, but we'd have white space around the longer edges if the image wasn't square. You can use that if you want, but I think it's nice to fill in the whole 80 by 80 block with an image, even if that means cutting out a little bit of the image in our scroll view. And then I'll tab and backspace over the code in placeholder. And oh, look at that, we got a bunch of pizza images over on the right. Again, mine are squished because I should have put the frame above scale to fill. And for the placeholder, I'm just gonna add a progress view and watch the preview as I enter progress view. And we really quickly see progress views spin before the images are loaded and shown. Again, these images are downloaded from cloud storage for Firebase using our image URL string. Nice. And I'll add a few more modifiers to tweak this. So below the scroll view, I'm going to add a frame of height 80. So the scroll view is always 80 in height. And I'll add some padding with dot horizontal. And that's a little too big. So I'm going to add comma four in here to shrink the padding. And that looks good. And I'm going to add the same amount of space between the elements of the H stack. And we do that by adding parens and a spacing parameter after the H stack keyword up here. And I'll enter spacing of four. And that looks great. So now that we've tested this user interface and like how it looks, let's replace the fake photos with data structures that will actually work in Cloud Firestore. So I'm going to highlight my fake photo struct and my let photos constant down here and comment this out with command slash. Then below this, I'll write var photos colon bracket capital P photo for the type. And this is not initialized since I'm going to pass this value in from the spot detail view. And it doesn't need to be a state value since we're not changing the photos array in this view. And we're also going to pass in a spot. So below this, we'll add var spot colon, and that's of type spot, so capital S spot. Now we'll eventually use the spot when we implement the ability to click on a photo and display a larger version of that in the photo view. We're going to add that functionality in the next lesson. But for now, we'll just pass in the spot here so that we don't have to add that later. Then our view stops working, so we're going to need to modify the preview provider. And since we're going to pass in a photo value, I want to reuse this image URL string that we used up here. So I'm going to highlight and copy this with a command C. Then we'll head down to the preview provider. I'll backspace over spot detail photo scroll view and enter the new one with the two parameters that are being passed in. And for photos, I'm going to create a photo array of a single photo value in here with square brackets. And inside, I'll say capital P photo, selecting the initializer. And between the parentheses, I'm going to add a parameter so I can pass an image URL string colon with double quotes and paste in the image URL string that we copied from above. And for the spot, I'll enter a spot initializer, capital S, and I'll enter ID colon inside. And I also want to pass in a string here so that we can initialize a valid spot. To do this, I can head back to the Firebase console in the browser, find the spot document that contains the photo that I'm looking at. And if you right click on the spot document title here, remember this is the list of all the spots in the spots collection. You can right click and select copy this value, then return to Xcode and paste it between the double quotes. And I added an extra set of double quotes around image URL string. Sorry about that. I'll fix that. And now our preview works. It's only showing one image, but what we want to do next is add this to our spot detail view. So let's head to that file now. Now remember how we read in our reviews for a given spot? Well, we use this at Firestore query property wrapper and we created a reviews array of reviews objects. Well, we're gonna do the same for photos below with at Firestore query parens. We'll pass in a collection path, which is a string. So this will start as the spots collection and then we'll follow this with var photos colon and in brackets, capital P photo singular. And remember this won't actually work because we need to use a spot ID to actually get the the photos collection for the spot that we're viewing. But we don't get that spot ID until we've actually viewed this view. So we need to update the photos variable in the on appear. We can scroll there right now. And you see these two lines in here, we did the same thing for the reviews array. We're gonna do pretty much the same thing for photos. So I'm gonna highlight these two lines in on appear. That's the one that says dollar sign reviews dot path and the print reviews line down below. I'm gonna copy them. I'm gonna paste them below these two lines. And there are four places in here that say reviews that we need to change to photos 
shoes instead. Make sure you don't remove any dollar signs where they're supposed to be. And so this will update the photo so that it shows all of the photos in the photos collection for the spot that we're now looking at. Now there's one more condition we need to deal with. If instead we're entering a brand new spot, that spot is not going to have a spot ID until we save it. So we have a line down in our save button action where we update this reviews.path if we've just saved a brand new spot and we now have a spot ID. Well, we're going to do the same thing with photos. And in fact, we actually entered this code previously. We're just going to uncomment it. Now, before we get there, remember our view is complex. If Xcode is being finicky on you, just make sure that you're not showing any errors at this point. And if you are, backtrack to the spot where you last showed a live preview with no errors and recreate the code. The code we're entering definitely works, so you shouldn't have any errors. And if you have errors, you don't want to continue to power through this because it might be tough to backtrack and find where those errors are. So now to head to the spot that we need to update, we actually put a to do comment in there. You can use the jump bar to find that. Or what I've done is I press command F for find and I've typed photos in the find bar up top. When I press return, it finds the next occurrence of photos, which is in that to do comment. And either way, you should jump down here to the to do comment in the save button action, this one right here. So we entered this in a previous lesson, but I commented it out because we didn't enter the photos value yet. But now that we have it, we can uncomment this line here, command slash removes it, and I'm going to remove the to do comment, mission accomplished. And now at long last, let's add our horizontal scroll view to show our images. And we do that just below the map and above the H stack that holds our average rating and the photo and rate buttons. And in here, we'll just enter spot detail photo scroll view. And for photos, we pass in lowercase photos, plural. And for spot, we pass in lowercase spot singular. And now we should see the live preview renders a space where the images show. So we've got a space in here, but unfortunately we don't see any images because we're not passing in any value to test the spot. So we don't see anything in the live preview, but we can build and run. Hammer time, no errors. The app loads. And I'll click on Pino's Pizza and Holy Horizontal Scroll View, Batman. Will you look at that? We can see all of the images that we saved in the prior lesson when we were working on saving images with cloud storage. Nice. And again, mine is squished. Sorry about that. What if we head back and take a look at Shake Shack? That's another spot where I added images in the previous lesson. And I only see one image in here. I only added one. Looking good. Let's look at Dave's Hot Chicken. And we see no images in here. Let's add some chicken. Let's see. I'll click on this tray of goodness and you can put in whatever description you want. I'll put in the description like it's spicy and then we'll save this. And Dave's hot chicken now has an image. Chicktacular. Dave's doesn't have any reviews. Why don't we click on the right button to make sure that's still working. You can get the mild, lots of lightweights in my fam, but they get no spicy and still love it. Dig in, save this and adding both photos and reviews is working great. If I head back to Pinos to continue to test this, if I add one more pizza, then I'll have to scroll to view them all. So we'll click photos. I'll add this weird football pizza. Not a real Pino specialty. Click save. When I do this, we have so many photos in here. I need to scroll to see all of the photos, but that's working great. Review scrolling is working great too. So congrats full stack Swift developer. You are now loading images from cloud storage for Firebase as well. Next up, we'll implement the ability to click on an image and see a full screen image with nothing distorted or cut off. And when we do that, if the person clicking the image was the person that entered that image, they'll be able to edit the description as well. Like what you're learning, be sure to like the videos, drop a comment to let me know, and subscribe. All this helps the channel gain traction. That ensures that I'll keep sending out free and fresh videos for all of you to enjoy. Now continue to hack.